Hi there, this is Simon from RiddenLegalEnglish.com and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about how you learn legal English and the mistakes that you might be making. In this video, I want to talk about mistake number three, which is don't just read. Now, you're probably thinking if this is mistake number three, where is mistake number one and two and how many mistakes are there? Well, you'll find out all that information on my blog, which you'll see a link to below this video. Uh, it's on my website, how do, I learn in, how do I Learn Legal English? Don't Make These Mistakes. And in that blog, I identify all of the mistakes that I think are mistakes based on my years of experience of teaching legal English and, in, and of proofreading documents and give you a brief argument about why they are mistakes and what you should do. This video is to go into a little bit more depth, use a little, a few more words just to talk a bit more about the subject and explain really why this is a mistake. So let's get started. Okay, if you want to improve your writing and that I'm going to assume that's your goal because a lawyer needs to improve their writing skills. It's the most important language skill that a lawyer can have. You might have heard the useless advice, which is read lots. What kind of advice is that? That is not very good advice for a number of different reasons. First of all, it assumes that the more you practice, the better you get. Unfortunately, we have to remember the maxim perfect practice makes perfect, not just any practice. So if you practice on, if, if you read lots and lots of bad legal writing and you practice that bad legal writing style, then you're not going to be writing well, you're going to be writing bad legal writing because that's exactly what you've been practicing. So you've got to find examples of good legal writing, look at those, and then try to copy that style or to t learn the lessons from that. So perfect practice makes perfect. If you write, if you read bad, badly written legal text and then you repeat that badly, uh, badly written legal text, it will work against you in your future careers. It won't help your clients understand what it is that you're trying to say. And of course, then you're just adding to the problem of bad legal writing in general. Now, bad legal writing has been criticized not just for decades, but for centuries. People have been complaining about how lawyers probably in every single jurisdiction around the world, about how uh, lawyers over time have written in the language that is used in their jurisdiction. And of course, in English, in the common law system, probably there's been more criticism than anywhere else. So you don't want to add to that pile of terrible bad writing. You want to, or terrible legal writing, you want to start growing the pile of good legal writing and of course, benefiting from that as well. And from a teacher's point of view, what does just read mean? From a, uh, it is of no value whatsoever unless you ask yourself critical questions. And we'll have a look at those critical questions uh, in a second. The other thing that you might think is when someone just says just read, it's natural to turn to uh, good authors who tend not to be legal English authors, because not many people know who good legal English authors are, but of uh, novel writers. So, for example, Stephen King is, uh, is uh, often cited as a fantastic writer, and he is. Rowling is considered a fantastic writer, and she is. But the problem is, that style of writing will not help you in legal English. Yes, in novels you have a narrative. Yes, in legal English you have a different, you also have a narrative. But in legal English you have different narratives. In fact, you have different narratives depending on what it is that you're trying to write. So reading lots of novels and learning from novels is good if you want to, if you want to write another type of English. But if you want to write legal English, this isn't going to help you much. So you have to focus on legal English authors and not normal and not novel writers, however good they might be. So what should you do? Well, this is where you've got to put your teacher's hat on as much as it's possible to do so and ask yourself questions about what you're reading. You've got to analyze that. So you've got to ask basic questions like, if this is good writing, why is it good writing? Can I find anything to support that? If this is bad writing, why is it bad writing? And what tells me it's bad writing? If I compare good writing to bad writing, will I be able to tell the differences? And will I be able to tell the similarities? Because there, are there any similarities in general? If I compare my writing to the good writing or to the bad writing, 
Will I understand or will I see where the differences are? Will I be able to take the teaching point away from this? Now, you may be able to do this, but many people can't. In fact, most people can't. This is why teachers are teachers, because teachers uh, learn how to be able to critically analyze things like this. So you've either got to turn to people like me and join, join my course in which I'll work with you and I'll help you to identify all of these things, or buy a recommended book. Now on my blog and in, in the link below this video, you'll see um, a link to a blog that I've written where I review various different legal English books and I recommend some legal English writing books and they are the first places to start. So if you want to improve your legal English writing, go to those books, one by Garner, one by Widdick, and buy one. They don't cost an awful lot of money and start to invest in your legal writing skills skills and the good thing about those books is that they have answers to the questions uh, garner's got answers just to some questions with it has got answers to all of the questions so there is feedback there you will be able to test yourself and see if you're right or wrong and of course the general rule of advice uh, to summarize why we are writing in the first place is that we are showing off your good communication skills and in the last mistake, if you've watched that, uh, if you've watched that video, I talked about thinking about the audience. And that's the key thing here, because if you're thinking about the audience, your communication is directed towards the audience so that they will understand. A lawyer who writes in and shows off his Shakespearean skills is not thinking of the audience. They're just trying to show off. The problem with that is that the reader won't understand what the lawyer is trying to write. OK, so be sure to check out those recommended books. Be sure to check out the free Legal English exercises and subscribe to my channel to make sure that you see all of the new content that I produce for YouTube to help you develop your Legal English writing skills. OK, I'll see you again soon.